What parameter should you interpret to determine if a patient is generating an appropriate amount of RBCs? So on the right side, you have some reticulocytes with all the arrow signs. Is it the reticulocyte percentage, the absolute retic count, the corrected reticulocyte index, the reticulocyte index, or some combination? So I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to decide. Um, put your nickel down. Okay, the answer is the corrected retic index and the retic index are both the right answer. So let's go over the terms. Reticulocyte index is the same as a reticulocyte production index, which is the same as a corrected reticulocyte count. So it's important to know these are all the same things when people are using these terms interchangeably. What really bothers me about all of this stuff is the fact that it's really hard to figure out where to look, what to make with all of these terms. So the first screenshot is CPRS and you have a reticulocyte percentage and a reticulocyte number. The bottom image is uh, from EPIC. And so you really gotta think about what to look at here. So if you pull up MDCalc, you have to put in three things to calculate all of this. Percentage of reticulocytes, a hematocrit and a normal hematocrit. So what do you put in that percentage of reticulocytes field? Well, if you're at the VA, you're gonna put in the reticulocyte percentage and make sure that, see here that it's a percentage. So if it's 20%, you put in 20, don't put in 0.2. And then here you're gonna use the reticulocyte count auto. Do not use any of the other ones. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of math. The absolute reticulite, reticulocyte count is equal to the percentage of reticulocytes times the patient's hematocrit over the normal hematocrit. And the reticulocyte index is that value divided by a maturation correction. What the heck is a maturation correction, you might ask? Well, the lower your hematocrit, the more your body will try to release premature RBCs. That's a normal thing. What that does is it increases the average lifespan of your circulating RBCs. So this is a correction factor for that. And there's many tables out there. This is one that I was able to glean from some literature. So the lower your hematocrit, the higher your maturation correction. So how do you interpret the RI? Well, once you've calculated it, it's less than two, it indicates hypoproliferation. If it is greater than two, that indicates hyperproliferation. It is up to your clinical judgment to decide if greater than two is clinically appropriate. And so what do I mean by that? Well, if you're losing blood or you're hemolyzing, you should actually expect the RI to be greater than two. If it is not greater than two, you may actually have an additional issue where you lack red blood cell production. So let's put this all together. Your retic index is the same as your retic production index is the same as your corrected reticulocyte count. Your reticulocyte index is your absolute retic count divided by your maturation correction. Your absolute retic count is your percentage of reticulocytes times your patient's hematocrit divided by normal hematocrit. If you're in CPRS, use the reticulocyte percentage. If you're in EPIC, use reticulocyte count auto. The maturation correction depends on the hematocrit percentage. The RI of two is your cutoff. So if it's greater than two, it indicates hyperproliferation, which can be normal. And if it's less than two, it indicates hypoproliferation. And with that, we're done.